I really love making little elements for my art journal and in this week's Friday Art I'm going to show you how you can make small elements that you can use in illustrations for cards and your journals and all of those sorts of things and we're going to be using watercolours and paints and acrylic pens and things like that. So welcome to Friday Art with me Kate Field, artist, teacher and speaker and passionate helping you find your creative spirit and then once you've found it to develop it further. So are you ready? Let's go. There are so many ways that we can add elements to our journals and of course there are wonderful elements that you can buy but I really like making my own. So in this little book here I've put some little tree elements. This is from a tutorial that I did a little while ago. Um, very easy to do so you might want to sort of check that one out with these little trees but the principle is the same and what we do is we create a sheet of elements which we then cut out and put into our journals. So this is another one with the trees, this is one with the with the flowers and last week I was doing little pumpkins and I thought what else could I do to sort of add to my uh, journals that I've got already, the things that I, I've, I've kind of started to put together and that need a little bit more and I thought I'm going to continue with the, the um, theme of autumn here in the UK, we've gone full into autumn now. The leaves are changing colours and it all looks really quite lovely. So we're going to do a whole series. And I'm thinking we're going to do toadstools and mushrooms because I thought they would be fun. And perhaps some more trees sort of building on this idea. And we'll just see where we go. And then I'll show you at the end what I like to do with my elements and we'll we'll write a few little poems I think to go into the journal. So what you're going to need? Um, you need some paper. I'm using cartridge paper and some watercolour paper. This is about 200 grams so it's not really thick because we want to be cutting them out and then sticking them in. I'm going to be using my Anna Linky paints and my Hitoto paints as well. These are watercolours but you can use whatever you want. The links to the ones that I use are going to be in the description and you can buy through those if you would like to. So I'm going to start off with my soft brush and my water and I'm just going to put a little bit of water directly on to the page and then I'm just going to add few bits. There's lots of different ways to put the paint onto the page and I'm just going to encourage you to try different different methods and see see what works. And all I'm doing is I'm just putting in some blobs, not kind of measuring anything because these are going to be elements so they're going to be cut out. So I'm just putting these in here and what we're going to do is to turn these blobs into elements and once you've learnt the technique then you can do you can do your own. I'm going to show different techniques throughout this tutorial and then you can pick the one that uh, resonates with you that you think oh I really like that I want to play with that one. Again, I'm just putting these in here. You can see, just a series of little blobs. Sorry about that shadow. Let's just move that light a little bit, see if that helps. I'm going to put that there. I'll just put that one to one side. And I'm going to do um, something slightly different. And I'm just going to move that. I'm going to go onto the cartridge paper. Again, I'm just going to use a large sheet because I'm going to be cutting these out so that's going to be fine. Let's just add a bit more water to this. 
that. And again, I'm just going to do these sort of little blobby shapes like this. I'm just going to see. Combining the colours just sort of makes it a little bit more interesting. Like this. So some of these are going to be trees, some of them are going to be pumpkins, and some of them I think I'm going to turn into acorns. I think we might have some acorns on these ones as well. Again, I'm just putting these like this. And and this is what I, I love about this kind of um, creative practice is that you can work really quickly and you can just put lots of lots of different ideas down and and just sort of have a bit of a play so like I did on the other one I had different different shapes for the pumpkins and again one with the with the trees as well but we're going to be creating different things with these shapes, as you'll see, when we get to that bit, let's see. Here we go. Just lots of uh, lots of different shapes. It all looks quite messy, but we're going to make these into elements for the journal. Just going to put in some more. Um, just sort of a bit of mark making in some of these but the, all of the colours work together and that's really important and I'm filling quite a lot of the space because I would li like some very small elements as well so again I'm going to leave that one to dry and then I will come back to it so on this one I'm going to do something um, a little bit different to that previous one. These are going to be slightly larger and these are going to become my decorative um, pumpkins and I'm going to do those in what sort of fantasy colours. Again still using the watercolour. I'm doing a combination of using the um, the paints in the tube which I am really liking, actually. I've been using these for um, just over a week now. I really do like them. Nice, vibrant colours. And then the Anna Linky ones, which I also really do love. I'm just going to put in a bit of a, a blue, a blue one. Now, these, these little illustrations, you could use them for cards, you could use them again, like I've been saying, to create elements in your journals. But you could use them for oh, all sorts of things, really, you know, as part of a, an illustration study. Let's just put a bit of blue in that one. I think that this could work quite nicely. That's... And I love pumpkins I love the the different shapes you can get so these ones are going to be quite quirky I think so I'm just putting in these colors let's do another one with the purple perhaps a smaller one over here up in this corner let's add a bit of turquoise to that you can see I'm working very quickly, just putting the um, putting the paint directly onto the paper. I'm not drawing anything out. I'm just enjoying the process. Let's just put a bit of red in that one. I like that. These are just the backgrounds. We're going to be adding some more decorations, and I think going to let's just get this one up here because along with decorative pumpkins what I would really like to do with are the acorns so let's let's have um let's have a bit of fun 
with some acorns. Let's see. Let's just sort of have this this idea of the acorn top. You can do that. So. Yeah, it's very oh pretty. They're going to be pretty acorns. They don't look like it at the moment. <laughs> But they will be and i hope you're going to enjoy them and i hope you'll enjoy um creating them so we're just like putting the tops these are the tops of the acorns putting in these colors this is a really good way to practice using watercolors if you're not feeling very confident you can just um, have a bit of a play with them like this. Well, I hope you're well. So uh, thank you for your lovely comments. So nice reading them all. I do, and I read every single one. So thank you so much for that. So that they are the top, the tops of my acorns. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use a little bit. Of, uh, of paint and we're going to come underneath it doesn't matter if uh, it leaks and I'm going to leave a bit of white space as well like that the same so they're all quite messy but that's okay adding my adding the bottom to the acorn again it's this is uh, it's just fun and they can become they will become very decorative when we move on to the next bit like this just again putting a bit of water a bit more water would make it paler so we don't use white um, in watercolour very often. I rarely will use it. I might at the end we'll be sort of adding adding things. But not at the moment. I'm just gonna put that one in there. And again, I'm gonna be cutting these out, so I'm just gonna add those. And yeah, they don't look like acorns at the moment, but they will when we've finished. And then finally, in the last bit of uh, preparation, what I'm going to do is some more leaves. Again, I'm going to break away from the traditional colours. Put in these are the backgrounds. We're going to be putting some patterns on to these as we go. Let's. Uh, I've been doing a lot of leaves um, over the last <laughs> few days and I have had a few leaves right in front of me to look at. I'm just going to put these on here. I did a whole tutorial on how to do different sorts of leaves um, earlier, so you might want to check that one out. Um, again, these are going to be cut out, so... doesn't matter where they go on the page and some are going to be uh, larger than larger than the others let's just put that one in there again moving the paint around with the water just to create different shapes this you can just sort of add, add to it like that oh, let's just do another another couple obviously when we start doing things like that other things will sort of pop into our heads and I know that when we were do when I was doing the 
bird one I think it was I had quite a few comments of people saying that they they started doing the bird shapes and then they kind of turned into fish and I'm getting a bit of a, a kind of a fish feel about the, these leaves because <laughs> um, that is is what happens and again as always this is the technique what you then do with it is up to you you know if you want to use this technique to make fish then you go ahead and do that because that will be fun and I'd love that so you can see I'm just sort of putting those these shapes here and then I will cut these out I might put some more in the in these spaces as well um, but I just wanted to give you an idea that you can then run with one like that like that I left all of these to dry and I've just started to do a few more these are all lovely and dry now and I've started to do a little bit of decoration on this one little pumpkins and what I'm using is acrylic pens these are ones with little bits of glitter in them this one is gold I'm also using a, just a black fine liner pen a black biro will work as well so you don't have to have anything fancy but you can get some quite lovely sparkly pens which i really like there's another one here that uh, i haven't used this one before so i'm going to give that one a go and see what that one is like so i'm just going to move all of these out of the way I just realize this piece of paper has got really grubby <laughs> oh sorry about that oh dear there we go. So I'm just going to do that. Um, thank you for all your lovely comments from my Wednesday wandering. Um, as I said then, uh, things are quite difficult in our family at the moment. We, yeah, we've we've had a loss, and um, but my my process really is just sort of getting back to work, really, and doing my my drawing and my painting, and so. I did think that maybe I would just um, have a week off, but actually there is not very much I can do practically. So I think I need to need to be doing this and sharing this with you. And I'm absolutely overwhelmed with the the love and the support that you've um, you've been sending me. So thank you so much for that. <sighs> These little pumpkins, I really do like them. They're, they're great fun to do. So I'm just using my gold and silver and glittery, sort of like copper, just to put some decorations on the, on the pumpkins. These I'm going to cut out, so it doesn't matter where they are on the page. Um, but looking at these blobs, I'm looking at this one, I'm thinking this looks more like an apple, like this one I turned into an apple. So again, I'm just going to... Perhaps let's just do the, the stalk of the apple. I might go over that with black. And then we can just put some put some little patterns. So these could be for sort of autumn decorations for for Halloween. But I'm sure that you can see that they could you could use this technique for, for all sorts of decorative ideas, decorative art. It's, and again, as always, I'm just going to encourage you to play. So this one I'm going to have as my pumpkin. I'm just going to just put these sort of gold swirls in. I will put a list of the materials that I use in the description. There we go. But again, use what you already have. You don't have to uh, spend a lot of money. There we go. Like that. And I think we'll just, just do our just do a kind of a whirly whirly top 
um, which I think I might do a bit of paint. So once you've got the acrylic paint, um, acrylic pens, you can always go um, ooh, over the top with with paint. Oh, I don't like that brush. What's happened there? Um, with the paint again, because the acrylic pen will just stay. And you can always go over it again if you want to. Put a little bit, a bit in there. So a bit more decoration on those. I will just really enjoy doing this. So I'm just going to take my time. Um, but I just wanted to show you the the technique, and then you can do your own thing, can't you? there let's do that with sort of like copper not sure whether that's going to show up very well and once I've done those copper bits I'm just going to take a pen this is just a fine liner pen nothing fancy at all there we go just sort of give that outline like this, um, and I think I'll just put a little bit on there. Put more swirls on it, I think. I do like this kind of spiral idea. I think that's quite fun. So I'll do a little bit more of those. I will cut them out and I, and I will show you what I do with them. But while we're waiting for that, let's move on to our acorns because I think these are quite fun and I haven't done acorns for a while so I thought now is the time again I'm going to be using some acrylic pens this time I'm going to be using silver um, and I might add some some other bits as well so I've done these in the blues and turquoise and purple I was going to get my silver pen and I'm again same as with the previous one I'm just going to sort of decorate the top bit of my little acorn a few just very simple dots and again we don't have to be um it doesn't have to be complicated uh, so the, the the watercolor is not fixed I've said this before and with the um, the silver it's picked it up but I quite like that that's that's quite nice so we're just putting in these little the little stems and let's just put in some dots on this one but you can see see the idea And just playing with um, <coughs> playing with an idea here, which I like. Um, and I'm going to go in with my ink pen. Actually, you know, I've got Diamine Ink um, Moon Dust. It's got silver in it, so you give it a bit of a shake, and then the silver sparkles. You might not be able to see it. But I, I really love diamine ink. Um, again, I've put a link below if you'd like to have a look for yourself. I'm just going to do, do some lines on my, my little acorn here. Again, I will be using these in my journals. I'll make perhaps some little bookmarks. I'll do those sorts of things with my students. I'll be teaching the little ones next week. And they like doing things like this. Again, you, you can do your own thing. You can just have some real fun with it. and. Just sort of try out ideas. 
because when we play with these like like shapes we're we're getting away from all um kind of ideas of perfection and we're just having some fun so let me let me know in the comments what you're going to do with these sorts of things and what ideas you've got love that and if you'd like to join the Facebook group and you haven't done that yet, you'll be very, very welcome. It's such a friendly group. Oh, my goodness. It's um, sort of taken off over the last few months and I have been a little bit overwhelmed by uh, just how lovely everyone is. And if you have already joined the Facebook group, but you've been a bit shy, then just just put a little comment against somebody else's work or post something that you are inspired by. Perhaps a lovely view from your window or on your walk, something like that. It's just really nice to support and inspire others. So these are they're just kind of quite cute, quite, quite quirky. And uh, I'm going to do the same sort of thing with the leaves. I'm going to be using silver and gold and some other other colours that I've got. You could use felt dip pens. You could also use um, more paint. All sorts of things like that. There are, so there's so many ways that you can develop this idea. <laughs> I don't know whether you can see, I've got some pink splodges here. Yes, my um, my paint, my bright pink neon paint. Um, I had a bit of an explosion. <laughs> it's, oh dear, yeah. That was quite funny. So I have quite a lot of things that are pink at the moment. And this piece got in the way. But I thought, no, that's fine. I can, I can leave it there. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, oh dear. So if it's not me knocking something over, it would be one of the cats. Monty has moved out of the box. He's not, uh, hasn't gone in the box for a few weeks. He's found his old kitten basket. It's a lovely old wicker, wicker basket that we bought when um, Monty and Amber were kittens, which was 16 years ago. Wow. Um, and they, they'll go for months, months and months, or even years without going in it at all. And then they'll suddenly decide that they both want to go in it. And that's what they're doing. I will post a photo of them both in their basket because they do look absolutely adorable. <laughs> so you can see I'm sort of moving well away from the sort of natural colours of the leaf and I'm just playing with some ideas and just putting some dots in because I think that can look really quite effective on that bit and I'll, I might do a few oh silver I think would look good dots really do look great in this kind of design Again, you don't have to sort of worry about things being absolutely accurate. It doesn't matter. I'm just doing that, and that will just pick up the light a little bit there. I'll do a few more of those leaves, and I'll, again, I will show you what I do at the end. But we're going to go back to this one which was just a whole load of orange blobs what am i going to do with these well i'm going to do all sorts of things with these they are going to be cut out but i'm going to show you that from these blobs you can create all sorts of things <laughs> and, and i do do love doing this because it's well because it's fun basically so this one here i, I am going to turn into into a pumpkin just pop that this little bit of gold same 
same idea as, as I've done, done before. With a little bit of gold there. I'm just going to get my, my pen. Go in with this kind of moon dust grey. Like that, just a tiny little element. And um, this one, this one I'm going to turn into a tree. This is going to be a little tree element. I keep it very, very simple at the bottom. Um, yeah, we're going to leave that one like that. Uh, where's my lid? Here we go. So what am I going to do with some of these others? Because, oh my gosh, the ideas are... They're, my ideas are a bit stuck at the moment because of all the stuff that's going on. But when I've got something like this, it just helps me to sort of open up a little bit. And I think I'll do another, another tree here. And with the gold. And some other, other ideas that might just sort of pop into my head. That was, that's a better gold, I think, for that. Let's just put some dots on there. And again, I could go, could we go around this with, uh, with my fine liner pen. And I've just sort of created just another little element that um, I can put in my journal or a card. Some, or other sort of de decorations and things like that. Now, I will just doodle on these <laughs> probably for the rest of the afternoon. But I did want you to see some of the other pieces that I've done, including my toadstools. Because I am going to do a few more of these. Again, they're very simple to do. And you can make them as complicated as you like, which is another thing that I really do like to do. And they are, as you can see, just a triangle and then a rectangle and you pu as you pull them together. And these ones are quite big, so they could be like the um, centerpiece of a of a card or something like that. We can have little tiny ones as well. So how are we going to start doing our toadstools? We're going to start off with a triangle with soft edges. So we can have that kind of shape. Um, I'm going to do different, different colours on these as well. We can do like a wider triangle. Putting in uh, just sort of blobs of water and just pop some paint in like those. We can also do um, kind of larger ones, and I'll do a few little ones as well. Again, I'm going to be um, cutting these out because I think that would be they'd be fun to to create the um, elements. Let's just do a few little ones here. Like that. And we can have a look like a little forest, a little forest of toadstools. Like this. And obviously we're going to get different angles with the toadstools, I'm just going to put in these. So I'm not putting in any details at the moment. Right, you'll see how things come together in, a, in a, when we get to the next point. Just put those in. That. Let's do that one up here, like that. Actually, 
actually I might just do a few little ones down here as well. Again, does that kind of, kind of a, like an arch um, with a triangle, that will work as well. And then that there. I'm going to leave those to dry and then we're going to come back and do some more work on those. While we're drying those, I'm going to come back to these. Oh, just move my leaves out of the way, just so that you can see various little patterns that I've done and how we create that idea of looking up un under the toadstool. And then the last thing we're going to do is to look at these, these ones. And these can be turned into all sorts of things. I'm going to turn them into like Christmas type apples. I know it is only October, but I know that a lot of people like to get themselves organised. And again, these are just blobs of, um, of watercolour. And I'm just going to go over them with my gold pen. Like this. And we can do, you know, perhaps they'll be like little, little apples. So we've got that one like that. And you can just really have some fun putting together some ideas. Just, this is an acrylic pen. running out so I might just need to give that a bit of a shake. There we go. Like that. We can have a little circle at the top. Something like that would be quite fun. And then I've got some silver. Again, simple dots. That's um, I like to see where where the pattern of the paint has gone, and perhaps use that as an idea. So I'm sort of going over with my silver pen, doing some contours. whether you can see that or not. It's the trouble with those sorts of silver on white. Sometimes the camera doesn't quite pick that up. And then we can just uh, play with that. I might just put some uh, gold on this one as well. I have silver and gold and blue. On this little bauble. <laughs> which, which is quite fun, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is do a little bit more on the leaves and then I'm going to show you how I use these as elements. So I'm back to my toadstools uh, and again I'm just using my gold and copper and we've got our, our sort of triangle and our rectangle but what we're going to do is to take this line around here I'll do this in, in the black as well because sometimes it's not easy to see what I'm doing so I'm just going to do that now just so that you can see it a little bit more clearly so that's the the line that comes around here. And this is the, the bottom bit. And then what we have are those fantastic lines that we get in these wonderful plants, fungi. 
like that and then straight away you can see that the uh, you're kind of looking up into it but it doesn't have to be like that so you could you could have one that is looking down so let's let's do that on this one so we have the line that goes there and then this way and then we can decorate them in lots of different ways so I'm just going to do a few few more so that you get the idea and our lines are going to come out like this underneath and then we can just start playing around with them with some patterns which I do think is is fun Let's, with this one, let's make it even bigger. So we can have that coming out like that. So up that way. And then all the lines are going to come out from there. And again, if you've got some toadstools or mushrooms near to where you live, then you can uh, study them, which is what I do like to do that. It's, they're fascinating, aren't they? Absolutely fascinating. For this one, let's just do some traditional dots, but we're going to do them in pink. I'm using my acrylic pen here. You could do this in paint colouring pencil. You could put colouring pencil on top of the watercolour. That's, uh, that was quite fun. <laughs> and then what we could always do is a little, little door, a little door. <laughs> you can make it into a little fairy house. Again, you can you can just play around with lots of ideas, can't you? Do your own thing with this. Like let's with this blue one. Let's have as if they're kind of garlands hanging down. I'm just going to keep this on blue on blue, and then add silver to the blue. And you could just create your own sort of fantasy fairy tale landscape that makes little as if they're lights little fairy lights on top of this one and again we can have our doorway can't really see that very clearly and I can have a window window there I'm just going to go over that with my fine liner again just uh, I will use this element as elements but also it's just a way of, of practicing just playing around with other other ideas that you you could do let's um, again let's have another kind of like garland of perhaps little flowers on here start off like that and then we can go around with oops just do little flowers around I'm sure you, you've got lots of ideas of what you could do and when I'm doing this sort of thing with the with the children, I I'll get them to create stories. <laughs> it's, uh, that's yeah, it's just always lovely to do to do things like that. That's um, and they have amazing imagination, so they'll come up with some great stories. Uh, 
some dots on here. And I might group some of these together in a composition for another sort of fairy tale piece. So I've started to cut out some of these. Now, I will just use scissors to cut them out. You could use a craft knife. I quite like having a bit of paper left around the edge, but you do it however you want to. I'm just going to go back to my flip book. Those of you who've um, seen the last few tutorials will see this. I've, For those of you who haven't, I have a full tutorial on how to make this flip book. And just over the next few weeks, so we're, we're in the end of October at the moment, um, I'm just adding adding to it. So this is one of my um, pumpkins that I did earlier. I just cut it out and I've popped it there. I've written a little haiku. And then I did some of these earlier. I'm, I'm just really enjoying um, just the process. <laughs> of this little book. But the other thing that I've done that I thought you might like is I've made a little card. I do like these. Um, they, they're so easy to make. Oh, no, I will show you how to make them in a moment. So it's that one. Again, I've just stuck the uh, pumpkin elements there. And then I've done another card here. Again, it's very, very easy to make in a kind of zigzag. And then you can put in your little elements and you could write, write a little story or something like that. And then very simply, just a bookmark. So let's go back to this one and what you're going to need. Now, again, those of you who have watched me before, know that I'm not really into the whole measuring thing, but sometimes we do actually have to do a bit of measuring, but I want to make it as simple as possible. And I want you to be able to use what you already have. Now here in the UK, paper is measured on the A size. So we have A0, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, etc. And in the U US, you have something completely different. So <laughs> which is not helpful, is it really? So whatever you've got, whatever standard, so whether it's A4 in the UK or letter size in the US and wherever you are in the world, your standard sheet of paper that you'd have in the photocopier, you're going to cut it in half. Now, this is standard A5 cardstock in the UK. And basically, you just fold it in half and you have your card. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to fold it in half. And again, if you've got a bone folder, you could use that. Or you could just use your finger. Just rub it down like that. So we're just going to fold it in half. It's very, very simple because then we're going to then take this edge and fold it back on itself. Again, I'm just using my fingers. You could use a bone folder if you want to, like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take, take our ruler, put it at the bottom, and I'm just going to use my nail to score it just so I can see, because we're just going to lop off the bottom. I'm just going to use scissors. You could use a craft knife or a guillotine. But I'm just cutting off the bottom. So we've got this. Oh, that's a bit wonky. Doesn't matter. The, the principle is the same. We're just going to do, oh, do it like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to flip this this bottom bit, we flip it over like that. So it's like we've just cut off the bottom and now we're going to turn it over. And we're going to stick it on the bottom so that once it's stuck, the card opens like that. 
So I'm just going to turn that like that for the minute. I'm going to get my glue stick. Ordinary glue. You could use double sided tape if you want to. Just a bit on the bottom there as well. And we're just going to line that up and put it over the bottom so that when we open it up, it looks like that. So you can fold it right out. Like that. And then we can just take our elements and pop them on. I might have a little apple. Put that one there. Might stick that one there. So if I go back to this one, exactly the same principle and I just put a little little poem there so for this one I am going to give you the measurements I do like it I think it looks uh, looks fun and really quite effective so on the screen now I've done this in centimetres and in inches. So, 12 inches, 30 centimetres. It's not exactly 30 centimetres if you are using A4 because it's like something 297 millimetres, something like that. But it's A4 size. If you're in America, you could use letter size. So these are kind of approximate, but this is what will work. Bear with me. <laughs> so... So it's the length of your paper. The width is going to be five inches or 13 centimetres. And we're going to put in a fold and then another fold and then another fold. So it folds back on itself. So you get that W or M if you're up that way. So the first fold is going to be, here we go, here we go. So that first fold, and how I do this, I'm just going to, here we go, it's going to be 10 centimetres from there. Here we go. Let's put a little mark on there. Then it's going to be eight centimetres, three inches, and then it's going to be seven or two and a half. And then once you've got your, your marks in, you can just put in your scorer. This is a wooden knitting needle, actually. Works really well, this score. And then you can just start to fold them like that. And then that's your, your piece there. Right, now what we're going to do, so I'll show you on this one. So we're going to create this diagonal. Um, oh. This is the bit where people get a bit scared. I'm just going to do this in white. I'm hoping it's going to come out. That's uh, just so that you can see. You're going to start off in this corner and you're just going to work your way down to about there. So if you're starting off in the corner and then you're going down about five centimetres, which is about two inches. Uh, again, don't worry about that bit too much. And then you're just going to cut that bit out. Like that. And that is your shape. And then you can just 
decide what elements you want to put where. Now, I like to start with the one at the front. So we could have, have our, our little tree at the front. But the, the lovely thing about this card, or this type of card, is you can put things here. But you can also put things here. So if I go back to this one. Started off with my little tree there. Then I put another one there. And then there. But we can also open it up this way. And you could write a little poem or a message in there. And then I just sort of put some silver dots along the top. And that's it really for today's session. Let's put those there. I've got lots of other elements that I will have great fun with over the next few days. I really hope you've enjoyed that tutorial and that you've got ideas for your art journal and the different elements that you want to do. You can use the techniques that I've taught you here to develop your own art practice. And if you'd like to see some more, you could look at this one or this one. And if you haven't liked and subscribed, why not? And I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.